Hi there, my name is Barb Owen of HowToGetCreative.com and today we're going to talk about paint pens. What is a paint pen? So let's just jump into it and take a look at them. One of the paint pens that I use quite a bit are the Posca paint pens and I, this is the set that I have. This is the, the paint pens are are just like markers filled with paint and they come in different tip sizes. This set happens to be the extra fine tip size. I find that the longer you have them, the more you have to shake them up. And then I usually, when I'm testing them out, I will write whatever it is. Posca Paint Pen Extra Fine, and this is just plain old black cardstock. So I will write that on there, and then I have that to refer back to. For example, and you'll see that, that I do this kind of testing on things, and so I'll write whatever it is and make myself a note so that I know what it is and what the tip size is and so forth. So this is the extra fine. One of the things you will find with these is that they tend to kind of spray paint a little bit or spit a little bit. So you either know that about that or you use that to your advantage. But they do tend to, as, as they encounter humps and bumps in the paper, or if you're working in an art journal and there's any kind of unevenness, for example, on this page, there's quite a bit of texture on this page. Um, they tend to, you know, if they encounter anything that's a little uneven on the surface, it will kind of spit a little bit. So you just have to know that about it. So that is the Posca paint pen, the Uni Posca paint pen. This again is the extra fine tip size. If I, when I order these again, I'm going to probably order the fine points to the extra fine. Although this is, it's a, it's a nice pen um, to have. You do need to really shake them, I find, especially in the white. So as the, the longer you have them, the more you're going to have to shake them. The next thing I want to talk about, these are similar to the Posca paint pens, and these are the Sharpie water-based paint pens. And they will have... The word on here, water-based, let me show that to you real close. They will have the words water-based around the end of the marker, the end of the pen, and also along the barrel of the pen someplace. So these are water-based paint pens. Again, these are extra fine, and I think we'll put these, we'll try them on both the um, white. This is a a Strathmore visual journal. So here is, and I've written there already, the Sharpie Extra Fine Water Based. And all of the paint pens, all, oh, 99% of them have a ball inside that will mix the paint and keep it mixed for you. So let's see if it shows up on black. And sometimes you need to, or most of the time I find, I need to let these completely dry to see what they really are going to look like. Because some of them will be quite opaque and others not so much. So that is the aqua turquoise. And this one is lavender. This one I haven't shaken quite as much. It doesn't seem to be quite as opaque. I'll shake it just a little bit longer. Okay, and so you've got you've got the idea. Those are the Sharpie Extra Fine water-based paint pens. Now Sharpies come in a variety of tip sizes. This is the fine point, and there's a big difference from the extra fine to the fine point. This is the white one. And this is Sharpie Fine. And I find that that is a pretty good white paint pen. So I, I do like those. And they come in different colors. This is black. And then this is a metallic gold and a medium point. So let's see how this works. 
So we have the extra fine, we have the fine, and this is this is a, getting to be a pretty good sized point, and this is medium. One thing you probably will find with paint pens is you can't write with them super fast. You've got to write a little slower to give them time to dispense the paint. So just so you know that. So that's medium point. So we got extra fine, fine, medium. And this is a fluorescent medium point. And this one is beginning to dry out on me. So let's try, here's another one that's a fluorescent. This is a fluorescent yellow in the same medium point. Let's see if we've got this one working. Now one of the things you'll find with fluorescent markers is that they often don't work as well, at least I find, they don't work as well over black as they do over a lighter color. So let's mark on this. So you can see how much better that and how much more fluorescent that is on the white rather than on the black. So the black doesn't show, and that's kind of typical I find for fluorescent markers, but they have a really, they have a good place, you know, in your, in your creative space if you'd like to have them. So this is also the Sharpie, this is in the metallic medium point. So that is metallic silver, and you get a good, a nice metallic. So that is a really nice, it looks white, kind of white on the camera, but it's really, you could almost pass for white, honestly. Uh, kind of a reflective quality in the white. Okay. Um, but it is silver. Sharpie also makes an oil-based paint pen. So I have several color, several of them in the paint, in the oil pens, oil-based. So let's take a look at those. I want you to see the difference in these. So here is the Sharpie paint pen, and it is going to say on the barrel it's going to tell you that it's what the point is and that it is oil based okay so not to be confused with those that are water based that you do you knew, do need to know which marker you're working with just just so that you get the result that you are after so this is the white one the white oil based marker now they do have a smell. And this is the fine point. And this probably, let's see if we can shake it up a little bit more and see if we can get a little bit more out of it. I do find with the, um, no, that one's just not going to, to write a whole lot. Let's see if any of the rest of these want to do it. Okay, so on the black, it is not wanting to show up. Let's go over on the white and let's see on, let's go to a page that has some other colors on it. And let's see if we can get the white one to show up here on a color. You just have to do some testing because sometimes they'll show up on some things and, and not on other things. Okay, that white one is just not wanting to show up. It may be that it just isn't shaken up. That's going to be my guess is that it needs to be shaken more. Because this one is showing up. I know that this is paint in here. This white stuff is paint. So let's just add some marks on top of it. And you can see that that's showing up quite well. Now, the thing about this is 
uh, because it is oil based it's going to take a while for this to dry I mean it's not going to take forever by any means but it is going to take a little while so you'd want to keep if you're working in a journal and you're using the oil based pens you're going to need to leave this open for a while so that it can completely dry which of course I'm not going to do because I'm doing a little demo for you guys alright so those are the oil based pens they do have some uh, smell to them and it's not obnoxious or anything but there is some smell and it does take them longer to dry so you have to know that and the white one um, I have had good luck with the white one I just think it hasn't I haven't used it in so long that I just haven't gotten it shaken up very well and you will find with paint pens that you do have to shake them and you do have to work with them and one of the biggest things I can tell you about paint pens one of the biggest things is use them because if you let them sit like I've had I literally had these oil pens the oil based ones for probably probably almost maybe 10 years getting close to 10 years you know that's asking a lot of them to keep working if I haven't used them regularly during that time so use your stuff yeah use it up okay let's see let's go on to some other ones these are the Liquitex paint markers and this has a different tip than a lot of them this has a wedge tip it's a wedge style tip so I can't remember if these will mark on dark colors and most of your paint pens every so often you do need to depress the tip to get more of the paint down into the uh, area where it can be dispensed so that is on black and this is the Liquitex paint marker and this is I'm going to turn it over and write here and again I've had these for a really long time this is Liquitex bright aqua green so it's a little sketchy but that's pretty much because it's an old I've had it for a long time and I also have it in this color which is vivid lime green again you want to make sure that you shake them up well it does have the wedge tip so there it is on a light color and on a dark color All right, so there's that. And again, you do need to let them dry so you can really see what how you know what the color, the full intensity of the color is going to be. So those are Liquitex paint markers. Then I have some markers by the company M O L O T O W. Molotow or Molotov. I'm not sure how they pronounce it. Um, and this is the um, two millimeter round tip again you have to shake them quite well now these of all of them I find to be of all the paint markers I find these to be quite finicky and they're a great white marker um, but I do find that the tips dry out on these horrendously fast. Now, I don't know if that's common. Um, across the board, but that's been my experience with them. So these are the two different tip sizes that I have in the, these markers. And, but you can see that that is a really good white marker. So this is the, the bigger tip. This is the finer tip. This is the one I prefer, but this one dries out um, a lot. And uh, yeah, I'm not so fond of that aspect of them. I have found, though, just for um, informational purposes, I have found that I store, and I have the best luck with these if I store them inside a plastic bag. This could be all in my imagination, all in my head, but it seems to me that if I store them wrapped up in a plastic bag, that they last longer. So that's what I do. 
I also have these in a set of neon colors with a white and a black. And these, I'll show you what these look like. These, these are nice. These are nice colors. So we'll use a couple of these. Again, I store them in a plastic bag, in their box and in a plastic bag. And these do not write on black, but they do write on white very nicely. So these are the Molotov, or Molotov, I'm not really sure how they're pronounced, markers. You can see that, see how it's reflecting in the light? That means it is not dry. So because it is a paint marker, you do have to know that you're going to have to allow for drying time. Okay. So if you have these, I do encourage you to keep them in plastic, and I think it'll you'll help you'll find that that helps to keep them from drying out. Okay, so we have those. So we've covered water-based and oil-based. Then um, another marker that is a kind of an interesting marker is made by the, the Elmer's Company. These are painter's pens by Elmer's. And this is a, a um, little test right here, so I'm not gonna do this again. This is the Elm, and this was the fine point, and I do have these in fine and um, I think medium. I have both of these. And, you know, I find that these, for $1.99, these came from Walmart. That's where I bought these. It's amazing how well these how well these do. It's amazing. And the, the ink or the paint started flowing very quickly. So, yeah, I would, uh, I, I really like these. You can't beat the price on them. Honestly, you cannot beat the price. Let's see if we can get this one. This is the pink. And again, some of them like to mark on dark surfaces and sometimes not. Sometimes it's better on a light color, light colored surface like this. So you can see on the black, <clears throat> even though it's drying out, it's coming up to show a little bit more on black. It's not going to show all that well on the black. And those come in different colors and they also come in metallics. So like this one is gold. Let's see how this does on the black. And often your metallic markers are really odory, have a lot of odor. So that looks great. Uh, it works great on the uh, black. Okay, so those are the painter's pins. Um, the Krylon, this is the Krylon 18 karat gold leafing pin. This is a beautiful, it's probably my favorite gold, get it up here where you can see it, that would help. This, the 18 karat gold leafing pin by Krylon. It is probably the most beautiful gold pen of everything. I do find that the tip on it wears out. The tip is a wedge style tip and I find that that wears out quicker than any other of my gold pens. So if you're gonna buy one of these and these are a little on the pricey side, if you're going to buy one of these, buy it and use it. Don't let it just sit around because you're going to hate yourself. <laughs> you're going to hate yourself if you do. It comes in other colors. This is red shimmer. I think it's copper and also silver. They're, um, they are also a solvent base, so they're, they're really quite, uh, quite smelly. And then I have a few of the Montana markers. So I'll show you a couple of those. So these are acrylic paint in these markers. It's a water-based acrylic paint. I have some of these that I haven't even opened, so we'll see how these are doing. There we go. So this is the Montana. 
And this pin point, I believe, is, let's see, looking for the tip size on it. It's on here someplace. Fine tip. So this is a fine tip, and um, I would consider it for what it's for most other paint pens this is more like a medium and this is fine but you know to me that is more of a medium point but <laughs> wait there's more and I think yeah those are fine tips but then you can get into these Mamba Jamba ones and this one is called the 15 millimeter. So this is a big old, big old marker. Look at the size of that point. But it makes great marks on a page. So this is a really cool pen to have just to do this. And I'm just touching it. I'm not pushing down. I'm just touching touching it on the journal page. So that is a great marker. I need to get one of those in white too, just for that same purpose. I forgot how great that is. I do have it in a gray, and this color is, they are the trickiest things to find the color. This is um, Iron Curtain. And this is also this great big point. So that is Iron Curtain is that color. All of your paint pens you want to store laying flat. And um, be sure that you do that. Be sure that you follow the instructions on all of your paint pens. Uh, as to whether they are to be stored. I think they all say store them flat, but follow your instructions about priming the points, uh, priming the pen to get the paint flowing and so forth. Some of them will tell you to depress it with the point up. Some of them tell you to depress it with the point down. Some of them tell you pump it. Some tell you don't pump it. So read your instructions that with each pen. This one is a really nice pen. This one I have had for years. The thing is the never ending pen. This is called the Painty Twin by Zig. I have no idea if this pen is even still available. Um, it is very smelly. So when you have these pens that are that are so smelly like this, make sure that you are working in a well ventilated area or you can uh, mess yourself up. <laughs> Let's just say that. But this is a really great gold and silver, and it's in the same, you know, you've got both of them in one pen, which is really nice. And then let's take a look at the Dilutions paint pens. These are relatively new on the market. Not super new, but relatively new. These are the paint colored paint pens. They also come in a set of black and white. At the point that I'm filming this, this these are the only ones that are available, I believe. Again, you have to shake them. You want to be really um, certain that you pump the or prime these exactly the way that they say to prime them. So you can read the directions for that. They're a very fine point. So let's see if we can get this going up here. I do find that with these, they need to be held more in an upright position for writing. And so let's come over here. Let me pick a different color that's darker. But do follow the instructions with the Dilutions paint pens. I have found that that is imperative with these. But I have to say that as I haven't used them for very long, but I have to say that I really do like them. I have not yet opened the black and the white, and so I can't tell you too much about those yet. But these I've used quite a bit in the colors, and I really do like them. Again, I store them inside a plastic bag because I just find that some of these markers, these paint markers, last longer that way. So I that's what I do with them. You know, got to do what works, right? 
And then last but not least, these don't exactly fall in the category of paint pens, but that's how I use them. And these are correction pens. So this is the Bic correction pen. You find these in office supply stores. Shake them. I've had this one, both of these, I've had for a long time. So shake them up. Do whatever the instructions tell you. And sometimes I have to clean them off a little bit. This one has, may have seen better days here. One of the things I like about this particular one, the Bic, and you can push pump it to get the fluid down in it. I do happen to like these for these funny little dots on dark paper. Very easy to use to get dotted effects. Not as great for writing. Kind of a scratchy, very scratchy look. But I just think they're, they're a lot of fun to use for the dots. That's my favorite thing to do with those. And then I would... Um, just clean off the pen point with a baby wipe or something. This one is the Pentel Pocket Correction Pen. Let's see if we can find a spot here. So you don't get a very smooth write writing smooth stroke but that's not what they're they're intended to block things out so if you make a mistake on white paper you know it's intended to be used as a correction pen because that's what it's for as opposed to a writing pen So it is a little harder with these two to correct to um, control the flow of the paint, but great white dots. Look at that. That is some serious white dotage going on there. And you just barely touch it and out they come. But it doesn't work as well. I find for writing purposes, but you can, it still kind of falls in that category of paint pen, so I keep them with the paint pens. And there may be other kinds out there that are equally, equally great in the correction pen line. All right, so now just a couple quick wrap up things. I know this one's getting kind of long here. Um, take your markers and practice with them on different kinds of paper. So I've done them on craft paper. I do the or craft cardstock on black and I write and test them and then I keep these goofy things with my paint pens so that I have the the um, record of what I've done and then I also write this is just on composition notebook paper and so I write with them in here just so I can see how they write like here's the Krylon marker that that really cool highly reflective gold marker. I write in here with all of those so I can see how they react on just plain paper. And uh, it just gives me a record of, of what they look like and how they, how they behave. So I just have one journal that is just specifically for that kind of uh, keeping track of things and testing things. So that is a little bit and I do mean a little bit about paint markers. Hopefully that helps you kind of kind of get an overview and you do not need this assortment of paint markers or paint pens. Let me tell you, you do not need this many. If I had to just choose one brand of paint marker that I was going to invest in, honestly, it would probably be um, the Elmer's because they're so reasonable and if they were you know if they go away I haven't invested very much money in them so am I gonna still keep all these other kinds probably because <laughs> because it's a sickness you know I really I really enjoy them and so I'm probably gonna keep them around 
Anyway, but if you can only if you could only buy one, try the Elmers and see how you like it. So I'm Barb Owen of HowToGetCreative.com. I invite you to come over to How to Get it, How to How to Get. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. How to Get Creative.com. It is a membership website, and we'd love to have you come over there and check us out. It's been a long day of filming today, so please pardon my little faux pas here. Here, and I can't even speak anymore, folks. <laughs> I'm just going to go before it gets worse. Thanks for watching. Remember to get creative today because you know it's easy. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.